John chapter 13, verse 4 to verse 9. I just want to share just for a few minutes this morning on the title, Anointed Hands. So I want you all to look at your hands. Look at both of your hands. And and I want you to see these hands and see them that, that your hands are anointed. Your hands are powerful. God is going to use your hands. Amen. I want to talk about that this morning, how important your hands are, what comes into your hands, how God can use you with your hands. Hands in the Bible, in the Bible, hands carry a powerful spiritual significance. Amen. In the Bible, all the way through, you'll see whenever it talks about hands, it talks about power. It talks about blessing. So whatever you touch shall be blessed. It talks about strength, instruction, discipline. It also talks about business. So your work, whatever you do with your hands, that's work, shall be blessed. And it, and it talks about impartation as well. That through your hands, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more later on, there is an impartation. You can impart something through your hands, through the laying on of your hands. And so I want us to to think about that this morning, that hands has a powerful significance in the Bible and very powerful in the Jewish and Hebrew culture, in the Hebrew people, their hands, very, very important. Let's look at John chapter 13, verse 4 to verse 9. It says, And Jesus rose up from supper and laid aside His garments, and He took a towel and He girded Himself. And he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he had around his waist. Verse 6. Then said Simon Peter to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do to you, you do not know, but you shall know after. Peter said to Jesus, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash not your feet, you have no part with me. And look what Peter said in verse 9. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, don't just wash my feet only, but my hands and my head. So the Apostle Peter got a little revelation right in that moment. When Jesus was washing the feet of the disciples, he came to Peter and Peter said, you're not going to touch my feet, you're not going to wash my feet. I feel embarrassed to let you do that. And Jesus begins to tell him, this is something that I must do. I want to teach you about service. I want to touch your feet. There was a spiritual significance in what Jesus was doing. I want to anoint your feet. I want to touch that area of your life. Feet, feet talks about our path, where we are going, our journey. Amen. I want to touch your path. I want to touch where you're walking. I want to touch your your destination. Whatever, wherever the sole of your feet shall tread upon shall be yours. It talks about possession. Amen. The Lord wants to bless our steps. The steps of a good man have been ordered by the Lord. Can you say amen, church? So I want to touch I want to touch your feet. I want to touch your journey in life. I want to touch your path. I want to make sure that you go in the right direction. I want to be in that area of your life. Can you say amen? I want to, and then he says, I, I, I touch, the apostle uh, Peter says to him, don't just touch my feet, but also touch my hands and my head. So before I get to the hands, he says, touch my head. He, don't, don't just, he got a powerful revelation. Don't just touch my feet then. Touch my head and my hands. Don't just touch my pathway. Don't just t- touch my, my journey in life. Don't just direct me. Touch my head as well. The head talks about our thoughts. Touch my thoughts. Touch my, my thinking. Renew my mind. Touch my head. Give me your way of thinking. Amen. Touch my, my, my head. Touch my, my thinking to think at a higher level. Give me plans, give me ideas, give me strategies, give me insights. Touch my head. How many of you would say this morning, Lord, touch my thinking. I want to think how you want me to think. Take out the, the old way of thinking and put in a new way of thinking. 
renew my mind, touch my head. You know, that there are many that they, 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 have, they have bad thinking. Stinking thinking equals, equals bad living. As a man thinks, so is he. Most of us have a bad thought life and we think wrong. We think negatively. We think thoughts of fear and thoughts of bitterness up here. There are things that, that live in our mind and we let them live there rent free. It's time to cast out bad thoughts. It's time to, to cast out the old way of thinking and ask God to renew our minds and to give us a... a, 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 a that, the Bible says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. So it's not God that has to come down to our level of thinking. I want to rise to His level of thinking. I want to start seeing things how God sees them. I want to start, I want to start having the vision that God wants me to have. So I touch my mind, touch my head. Renew my mind. Change my thinking. Give me, a, give me higher levels of thinking. Give me higher levels of ideas. Take out the rubbish and put in something new and something beautiful. Put in, oh, hallelujah. Touch my mind and give me your word that I may meditate on your word day and night. Come on, someone say, touch my head, Lord. Touch my head. Touch my head. Give me hair, Lord. Come on, give me hair, Lord. Amen. <laughs> and then, but this is the thing. P Peter got a powerful revelation. Don't, don't just touch my feet, touch my head. And then he says, touch my hands. Touch my hands as well, Lord. Touch my hands. Anoint my hands. Because it was, it, was, it was very powerful significance. If you read the book of Leviticus, Leviticus the, 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 the high priest was told to sprinkle blood on his ears, sprinkle blood on the, on the toe of his, of his foot and, and, and the thumb. There's, there's this powerful significance. The head, the hands, the feet. Touch my hands. Touch my hands, Lord. What for? What for? What are hands for? Number one, spiritual impartation. Touch my hands, Lord, for spiritual impartation. You know, God, God in the book of Acts 19, it says, and God did special miracles through the hands of Paul. God did special miracles through the hands of Paul. He, he laid his hands on handkerchiefs and those handkerchiefs and aprons were taken to the sick and to the possessed by the devil, and they were healed and delivered. But the, I love what it says, and God did special miracles through His hands. How many of you would, would, would believe that God can do special miracles through our hands? Through our hands. And another translation is, God did extraordinary things. Marvelous things. God did extraordinary things miracles through his hands. Another translation says, God did unusual miracles through the hands of Paul. I don't know about you, but I want to go into a, into a season where God does unusual miracles through my hands, that whatever I put my hands to, miraculous things can happen. Extraordinary things can happen. Great feats can be done for God through these hands. Come on, church. Marvelous things can happen. Wherever these hands go, wherever these hands touch, extraordinary things, things come into being, come into place because God is using my hands. Come on, church. It's time that God does extraordinary things through your hands. Extraordinary things in your workplace through your hands. Extraordinary things of invention through your hands. When you're working, your hands are an extension of the anointing of God. Hand, look at your hands, anointed to do extraordinary things. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. You, let, let, actually, let's read that. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. Mark 16, 17 to 18. Let's actually, we'll start reading from verse 15. And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. 
and these signs shall follow them that believe. Do you believe this morning? These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Look at this. They shall lay hands. Come on. They shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. How many of you would like to begin to lay hands on the sick and the sick recover? That word sick is not just sick as in an infirmity in the body. It's, it's, it, that's the, the idea, the, the main idea is the sickness in a body. But the word sick in the original just means anything that's lacking. You shall lay hands on anything that is lacking that which should be there, anything that is half, anything that is not whole, anything that is not complete, and what is not whole shall be made whole in Jesus' name. You shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Start using your hands. Whenever you find an area in your life, in your world, your marriage, your children, your business, your car, your home, your food, lay hands on what is not complete. And God will use your hands for a spiritual impartation. I believe that. There are men that have testified that they've laid hands on their car and the car began to work. Now, don't get into the habit of doing that. <laughs> Amen. Um, because God gives us also wisdom. Yeah. You shall grab, use your hands to, to get the nozzle at the pump. And you, shall, and you shall put petrol in your car. That's the wisdom part of it. But if forever, some reason, you, you need a miracle from God, lay your hands. Amen. Say, Recover. Be whole. Be complete. God has anointed these hands to place them on sick things, on half done things. And, and there is an anointing for recovery. There's an anointing for recovery. There's an anointing for restoration. There's an anointing to touch areas in your life where the devil has stolen from you. Can you say amen, church? And, and declare a recovery. You, you shall lay hands on the sick. Oh, we want the evangelist to lay hands on the sick. We want the prophet from so-and-so who's coming to Brisbane to lay hands on the sick. No, you and I have been given power in our hands to lay them on the sick and the sick shall recover. Amen. Around us, there are sick people. There are sick family members. Lay hands. Lay hands. Go for gold. Amen. Just go ahead. Can I lay my hands on you? You got to ask first. I want to pray for you. I remember there was a man once that he used to drop off skips, skips to our um, to the our, our church actually that we were in another in another building. And there was this man that I had a bit, used to call him all the time to bring skips. He did it for my house as well. And then I, every time he would come, I would use that opportunity to share the gospel with him. Share the gospel with him. He would listen, amazing, listen and ask questions. And then I invited him to church, come with your family. Oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. And, and one day he came and, and uh, he couldn't really move. He had, broke, he had broken his ankle. He had broken, broken his ankle and, his, and, and I said, my... You should be resting as I can't. I have to work. I need to make money. This is my business. I'm the only employee. And then I felt the Holy Spirit here. Lay your hands on him. And I'm thinking, this, <laughs> he's not a church person. He's not a Christian. And, I can, and it wouldn't go away. It wouldn't go away. Lay your ask him if you can lay your hands on him. So he wouldn't go away. So I was, I was sharing with him the gospel and sharing with him that, about Jesus. And I said, you know what? God can heal your, your broken ankle. 
would you let me lay hands on you? And, you know, what does that mean, lay hands on me? Are you going to lay hands on me and take me somewhere? No, can I just place my hand on your ankle? Can I pray that God will heal you? And he said, okay. See, sometimes, sometimes the world has a little bit more faith. He says, yeah, okay, go for it. Like, I don't know about you, but if I was not a Christian, someone says, can I lay my hands on your leg? I'll go, get away. Well, lay my hand, you know, but there's this faith thing. And I laid my hands on his, and, and I was praying, and I opened my eyes, and you could, he just had his eyes open. But when I finished praying for me, he goes, I felt something. I felt something in my leg. I said, that's the power of God. Amen. I said, if you, right now, if you move it around, he said, I'm, it's, it's a bit painful. I said, but something has gone into your leg. Amen. You shall recover. You shall be healed. God has touched your leg. God has touched your body. He loves you so much. Amen. The anointing of the hands. Yeah. Your hands have been given to you by God to impart spiritual power to that which is sick, to that which is not whole. Extraordinary feats through your hands this morning. Can you shout amen this morning, church? Amen. There's also uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 22. Hands, when we lay our hands, there is also a, a, uh, a transfer of the, of, of the Spirit that is on us can go into, into someone else. Look what 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 22 says. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy, lay hands suddenly on no man. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Now, that there is talking about ordination. It's talking about spirit, giving people spiritual uh, positions. In, in the New Testament, when, you, when, when, a, when a, a bishop or a pastor would lay hands on someone for ordination, it, it was like you were giving your seal of approval. There were, there's a transfer of authority. There's a transfer of power. There's a transfer of the anointing of God. Lay, don't lay hands quickly on anyone. Why? Because there is a transfer because there is, a, there is a sign of approval. Also, don't you allow yourself to just have your hands laid on you by anyone. Why? Because there is a transfer in the laying on of hands. There's a spiritual impartation. It's very significant. Can you say amen, church? So you, you don't just let anyone lay hands on you. You need, to, you need to trust. You need to have the right spiritual covering. That's why you need to be sitting under a, 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 a spiritual authority, a spiritual pastor or, 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 or apostle or in the five-fold ministry that you can trust that when they lay hands on you, there's going to be a healthy spiritual impartation into your life. Can you shout amen, church? Very important. I know people that, are, that, that just let anyone lay hands on them, anyone pray for them. And sometimes you, you can catch, you can catch into your spirit what's on somebody else. Amen. So protect yourself from, not, from just not allowing anyone to lay hands on you. And at the same time, don't just give anyone authority. Don't just, you, don't just give your sign of approval just to anyone through the laying on of hands. Amen. That's, that's a danger that we have in the church today. That's a lesson that I've learned in my years of ministry, to not be quick to lay hands on someone and say, this person is now ordained. This person is now in the fivefold ministry. Don't be quick to put people into positions of authority in your business. Don't be quick to put people into leadership positions. Don't be quick to hand over Hand over information. Don't be quick to give people trust. Amen. Because this is very, very important. Because there's an impartation. We wouldn't do that with our car. You know, your car, before you buy it, it's gone through a, a tremendous, excruciating period of, of tests. And when the car goes to the market, it's gone through crash testing, Everything in that car has been tested over and over and over again. It's been put under high pressure. 
very high pressure before it is ready for public exposure. But sometimes in the, in the kingdom, we're, we're not good at testing. We're not good at, at proving first before we give people public exposure. Amen. We need, to, we need to allow the processes of God. And I know some people get upset with, with you know, pastors uh, you know, in our ministry. People get upset because we might wait a while before someone gets, gets a position of authority in the church. Or we might wait a while before someone preaches. Or we might wait a while before someone can participate in, 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 a, in a ministry of the church. But that is healthy. That is safe. And especially when we're talking about five-fold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Don't lay hands suddenly on no man. Don't be, don't be quick to give your, your seal of approval. Don't give your seal of approval hastily. Amen. Why? Because there's a transfer through the laying on of our hands. And let me, and I'll say it again, and the other side, don't be quick just to let anyone lay hands on you. Why? Because it's a transfer. We have so many today, what we call uh, vagabond preachers, vagabond prayer warriors. They go everywhere laying hands on anyone, laying hands on everyone. They go into churches and just start laying hands on anyone. You've got to be careful with that. Amen. We've got to protect our spirit. Know who is imparting something into your life. Know who's, who's releasing a spiritual gift into your life. Amen? So, so your, hands, your hands are anointed for extraordinary exploits. Your hands are anointed to lay them on the sick and they shall recover. Your hands are anointed to, to uh, give a spiritual impartation to those that God's placed in your life. Number two, your hands are anointed for blessing. Your hands are anointed to bless. Bless your children. Bless your possessions. If you remember in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in one occasion, uh, Jacob, Joseph's father, laid his hands on, on Joseph's children and he blessed them. In, in Jewish Hebrew culture, it's very, very significant when the father or the grandfather lays his hands on their head and blesses them and speaks a blessing over their life and decrees God's favour, decrees God's blessing. With the laying on of hands, these children are blessed. When, they, when there would be a marriage, this marriage is blessed. Blessing. Lay hands on your children. Lay hands on your wife, on your husband. Lay hands on your family. Bless them. Bless them. And, and you know, I look for opportunity. I lay hands on my, on my children. Lay hands on, my, on, on, on the little one. He's small and, and try to get the big one back here. I'll hit him out here. They don't even realize what I'm doing. I'm blessing them. I hug them and, I'm, and while I'm hugging, bless them. Bless them. Because, you know, the older they get, the, the less hugging they want. So you gotta, you just, you gotta do a little pretending. You did, a, you did well today, and you're here. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. You touch. I bless you. Speak blessing over your children. Speak blessing over your grandchildren. There's an anointing in your hands to bless. Bless your house. Walk. Bless. Touch your. I bless this house. I bless this house. Amen. Amen. Oh, you look crazy. But you'll receive the benefits of blessing your house. You buy a car, the first thing you do, I bless this car. And you lay your hands on that car. And you say, you now are holy. You now are set apart. You are blessed. You belong to God. You belong to the kingdom now. You are blessed. This house is blessed. Whenever I walk into a plane, every time I walk into a plane, 
the last, before I walk in, I always do this. I put my hand while I'm, I bless this plane. I always, in Jesus' name. You bless. Your hands are anointed to bless. I bless this food that I'm preparing. I bless it. I bless this work that God has given to me. I bless this assignment. I, 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 I bless, I bless, I bless, I bless. Walk around blessing whatever is under your sphere of influence. There's an anointing on your hands to decree the blessing of God over whatever God has placed in your world. Oh, that sounds crazy, Pastor. Well, it, it, it's as crazy as, as when the five loaves and the two fish were placed into the hands of Jesus. And the Bible said, and he blessed them. And he blessed the five loaves and the two fish. And in his hands, the blessing resulted in multiplication. Come on. The money that you see, grab the money. I bless you. I bless you. I decree multiplication. I declare that you are used correctly. Bless your finances. There's an anointing in your hands for blessing. Number three, there is an anointing of your hands for service. You serve with your hands. God has anointed you to serve. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all of your might. Whatever your hands, whatever you're doing right now, as, as insignificant as you think it might be, do it with all of your might. I think of a mother that on Monday morning is, is fixing the, the lunch for the children. That's significant. Bless that. Serve your children with, do, by doing that. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all of your might. Serve. Serve with all of your might. Amen. For, the, for in the grave where you are going, there is no work. There is no planning. There is no knowledge or no thinking. And there is no wisdom. Once, once you die, it's, it's, it's over. You'd wish you could cook that meal. You'd wish you could do something with your hands. It's too late. Whatever you're doing now, Whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all of your might. What an opportunity we have to serve. What an opportunity we have to do something with our hands. And number four, this is the one that I want us to look at just in a little bit more detail this morning. Number four, your hands are anointed for business, for finances, and for giving and receiving. So let me go through that again because this is what I want to touch on this morning mainly. Number one, your hands are anointed for spiritual impartation. Your hands are anointed to bless. Your hands are anointed to serve. And your hands are anointed for business, for finances, for giving and receiving. If you go to the book of Acts chapter 20, your hands are anointed for business. Your hands are anointed for finances. And your hands are anointed to give and to receive. With your hands, you, you, need to, you need your hands to give. You need to open your hands to give. But you need to open your hands to receive. So I want to declare that there's an anointing on your hands for giving and receiving. There's an anointing on your hands for finances. There's an anointing on your hands for for business, business. I, I feel that so strong and I want to release that to the church this morning and to anyone that might be watching online. Your hands are anointed for business. Business ideas, business strategies, business concepts that God will give to you. Your hands are anointed that whatever they touch prospers. Amen. Look at Acts chapter 20, verse 33 to 35 says, this is the Apostle Paul talking. He says, I have coveted no one's silver, no one's gold, or no one's apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities 
and for those who are with me. So he was blessed. The Apostle Paul says, I have covered in no one's gold, no one's silver, and no one's clothing. And, you know, that's what they criticize a lot of pastors for, the pastors in it for gold, silver, and clothing. The majority of pastors are not in it for gold, silver, and clothing. They're in it for souls. The Apostle Paul says, you know, stop, stop lying about me. Stop going around saying that I'm in the ministry for your silver, for your gold, and for your clothes. And then he, and then he hits it on the head. He tells him, you know why? Because these hands, my hands... My hands have provided for my necessities. And that word necessities, in in the right translation, and I love this, is these hands, and I can just imagine the Apostle Paul because he was so confident and he was a little bit cheeky as well. He was quite cheeky. In one occasion, he says, says, "I, I hear what the people of the church are saying while I'm not there. And then he says, but get ready because I'm gonna be there soon. And I'm going to find out how powerful you really are. <laughs> See if you've got the guts to say what you're saying while I'm there. Yeah, the Apostle Paul, because he, he knows. He's the man. Jesus we know. Paul we know. I mean, you, could just, you could just feel those brethren that were talking about him trembling. He's coming. I won't come that Sunday. The Sunday Paul preaches, I won't be there. You've been talking about him the whole year. Now that he's coming, you don't want to see him. That's how many people are. They talk about you behind your back. But the moment they see you, oh, they put a smile on their face real quick and pretend. The Holy Spirit shows you and you pretend as well. <laughs> yeah, how are you doing? Uh, you know very well here. Amen. The Apostle Paul, so I, I think the Apostle Paul said, I don't, I'm not here for your gold. As a matter of fact, you know, I, the offering, you, I'm not saying you, I'm not saying you guys. He said, but the matter of fact, the, the offering you gave last week didn't even cut my travel expenses. So I'm not here for your gold. I'm not here for your silver. I'm not here for your clothes. I don't even like the clothes you're wearing, the Apostle Paul said. He says, and then he says this, and I can just see the Apostle Paul going, because these hands have provided for my business. The word necessities is, is not the right word. The word is business. The, you could just see him going, these hands have provided for my business. And, and, and he had a thriving business because look what it says. They provided for my business, my needs, and, and for those who are with me. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this. How? With your hands. That you must support the weak. And remember the words of Jesus that He said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Hallelujah. He's, let me just put this in a nutshell. The Apostle Paul is saying, my business has, not, has been so successful. My business is, is, is flourishing. And if, you, if you read Acts, I think it's Acts, um, it's a little bit further on in Acts. His business was actually a business of making tents. He would build tents. So he would preach and and the churches would give him offerings, but very limited. If you want to be if you want to live the abundant life, it's not going to be on the offering of the church. God's given you an idea. God's given you brains. As as a matter of fact, most pastors that I know are, are savvy businessmen. Because they've understood you're not in the ministry for gold, silver, and apparel. Amen. Amen. You're in the ministry for souls. Amen. But, you, but you also want to be blessed. Amen. You also want to be blessed. But not, not just bless yourself. Look at the Apostle Paul said. These hands have ministered to my business. These hands have been used to make tents for my business. And they've provided not just for me, they've provided for those that are with me. I mean, this is a thriving business. And then he says there, and, and, and I've shown you, I've shown you the church that's so laboring. That, what is it? I've shown you that with your hands, 
with your business, with your work, whatever it is that God's put you to do, that's how we support the weak. So, so that's the Apostle Paul, someone saying, oh, the Apostle Paul, all he does is takes, 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 takes. And he's going, are you kidding? Through what I'm doing, I don't just support myself. I support the, the entourage that's with me and we support the weak. How, are, how beloved, how are you or me, how are we ever going to supply for more than just ourselves? When our hands are anointed for business, when our hands are anointed for finances, when our hands are anointed and we use them to give and to receive, you can then live a life of true abundance where you don't just supply for yourself, but you supply for those that are with you and you have enough to give to the weak. Because if you're going to live, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You've got to be blessed. You have to prosper. Your hands need to be anointed for business, anointed for work. Can you shout amen, church? It's not just to receive, but to give. Blessed for business. This is, this is so important in, in, in the life of the church, in the life of Christians. Are you, are you getting this in your spirit this morning, church? That what God wants to anoint your hands. So you can say, these hands have ministered to my necessities. These hands have ministered to my business. God wants to bless you. God wants to prosper you. And not just for the, for the sake of you having a thriving work life or a thriving and abundant finances. It's so that you can then support the weak. So that you can be in a place to give whenever God tells you to give. These hands are anointed to give. These hands are anointed for business. I, I've learned this, I learned this a long time ago. Maybe not as long as I should have, but I've learned it. And God is good. Amen. God is good. Amen. Genesis chapter 39, verse 1 to 3. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought him from the Ishmaelites and had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw that the Lord was with him. How? And that the Lord made everything he did to prosper in his hands. How did the master Potiphar see that the Lord was with him? What was an indicator that the Lord was with him? That everything that Joseph did prospered in his hands. How many of you would like to have that kind of an anointing? That everything you do prospers in your hands. Everything you do multiplies and is blessed and increases. Everything the boss gets you to do, bless. And the boss sees it. The boss observes that whatever you do in the workplace prospers. Whenever you touch something in a department, it increases. It prospers. There's a blessing there. The, the, the boss sees it. We need an anointing for our hands that whatever we do prospers. It's just for the sake of prosperity, just for the sake of our blessing. No, so that we can be a blessing so that we can touch somebody's life, so that we can give whenever God instructs us to give. I believe that God's going to bless many, many of you here this morning with an anointing on your hands for business, for finances, to give and to receive. Can you shout amen, church, this morning? Let's go to one last chapter, Judges chapter 15. Judges chapter 15. Judges chapter 15, verse 13 and 15. And we'll finish off with these few verses here. 
Judges 15, 13 to verse 15. And they spoke unto Samson and said, No, but we will bind you and deliver you into their hands, and surely we will not kill you. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And when he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that were burnt with fire. And his bands were loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hands and took it, and he slew a thousand men with it. Can you say amen to that word? Samson, the mighty Samson. His hands were tied up by the enemy. His hands were bound by the enemy. The devil tried to stop him by chaining up his hands. Amen. And then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson and, those, and the chains came off. And it, look what it says there. And he found a new jawbone and he put, his, he put forth his hands and he picked it up. And he slew a thousand men with it. How many of you believe that if one man with one jawbone of a donkey kills a thousand men, how many of you believe that's a great exploit? That's an extraordinary thing. God did an extraordinary thing through the hands of Samson. But he took, he had to take this new jawbone. He had to take this new thing that God was putting in his, in his life. He had to reach out and grab it and use it. In his hands, it became an anointed tool. It became an anointed vehicle. It became an anointed weapon in his hands. There are, there are things in your world right now that God's going to place in your, in your world that it's going to be a new thing. It's going to be a fresh thing. It's going to be an odd thing, but it's going to be a God thing. And, but you have to place your hands. You have to actually reach out and take it. Take that opportunity Take that new strategy. Take that new job. Take that new business idea. Take that new plan that God is going to give to you that might, might seem like it's, it's, it doesn't make sense and God's placed it there and He's saying, come on, it's time for you to take it up with your hands. And in your hands, this thing, this odd thing, this odd looking thing, this strange thing, this small idea, this small step in your hands, Great exploits shall be done in Jesus' name. Great things shall be done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Great feats shall be done with this thing that God's going to put in your hands. But what I want to look at just as we close this morning is what, what if anything has bound up your hands? See, the, the devil tried to stop Samson by chaining his hands. And there are things that the devil uses to, it's like nothing's working. Anything I put my hands to fails. Nothing seems to prosper. Nothing seems to increase. Nothing seems to multiply. You know, fear. Fear. Maybe there's fear. Maybe there's discouragement. Maybe there's heaviness, pain. You know, like, like Moses, his, heart, his hands were falling. His hands were falling. He became tired. He became weary. And Ben and Hood had to raise his hands up. Had to raise his hands. Are you tired this morning? Are you exhausted this morning? Have you become heavy this morning? Your hands become heavy. God wants to anoint them. God wants to break that off your hands today so you can take this thing that God is, has given to you and so you can use it for His glory. Raise your hands all over this place. Raise your hands. Let's all stand up. Say, God, anoint these hands. Anoint these hands, God. In Jesus' name.